Cinderella. There once lived a pretty young girl called Cinderella, with her father, stepmother, and two stepsisters called Drizella and Anastasia. The stepmother and her daughters were very cruel, making Cinderella do all the chores. Cinderella, Cinderella, look at the time. Cinderella still hasn't brought in my tea. Oh, I feel a headache starting. I'm sorry, mother. I was. Stop making excuses, you lazy girl. Just then, Anastasia calls out for Cinderella. Where has that lazy thing gone? Where is my dress you were supposed to iron? I was just going to bring it up to you. Look at you, you filthy thing! Wash yourself before you touch my dress, dirty wretch! This was poor Cinderella's life. Every day she toiled from morning to night, doing all the household work. Every night, tired, she went up to the attic where she slept on a bed of straw. <coughs> One morning, when Cinderella was in the kitchen, she heard her stepmother and sisters talking very excitedly. Mama, this is an invitation for the prince's ball. He has invited all the pretty ladies of the kingdom to find his bride among them. Mother, Anastasia, we have to visit the dressmaker to make beautiful gowns. Oh, I am so excited! I am going to get a green gown and wear my lovely emeralds with it. And I will get a gown in ice blue and wear my dazzling diamonds and sapphires with it. My daughters will be the bells of the ball, I'm sure. The next few days, Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters visited dressmakers, hairstylists, jewelers, and shoe shops, while poor Cinderella did all the work. Finally, the day of the ball arrived. With Drizella, Anastasia, and their mother getting dressed, each kept calling out for Cinderella to help them get dressed and make last-minute touches to their makeup. The coach has already arrived. We'd better leave if we are not to be late. Cinderella's father, stepmother, and stepsisters left for the ball, and Cinderella kept looking till they were out of sight. She then went to the kitchen and sat down among the cinders. Oh, Mama, why did you go away and leave me? Suddenly, a blue light filled the room. Cinderella rubbed her eyes to see clearly and saw a queer old lady with soft white curls on her head. Her dress had flounces and jewels sparkled on her dress. In her hand, she had a wand, the tip of which glowed blue. Who, who, who are you? I am your fairy godmother. Now, now, stop crying and tell me what the matter is. N nothing. Nothing is the matter. Hmm. Then why are tears streaming down your cheeks? Ah, I see. You're upset because you could not go to the prince's ball with your parents and sisters. Now stop crying. You are going to the ball. Really? I can go to the ball? Of course, my dear. But how, Godmother? I have nothing to wear and no way of going there. Hmm. Can you get me a large pumpkin? A pumpkin? What for? You ask too many questions, child. Just do as you are told. Cinderella brought a big fat pumpkin from the garden. The fairy touched it with her wand. And before Cinderella's amazed eyes, the pumpkin changed into a beautiful coach. Now we need six horses to draw the coach. Go and fetch me six mice. Cinderella quickly got the mouse trap from the kitchen corner. The fairy touched the mice with her wand, and they immediately turned into six beautiful horses. Next, the fairy godmother changed a nice fat rat with big whiskers to a coachman, and six lizards into footmen. Well, there we go, all set for the ball. Now, why do you have that gloomy look on your face? Fairy godmother, 
How can I go to the ball dressed in these rags? Silly child, I haven't forgotten about your clothes. Come here, stand in front of me. One touch of her wand, and lo and behold, she was transformed into an absolutely beautiful princess in a shimmering dress of gold and silver with shining precious stones. Her hair was piled up into a fashionable style with a dazzling tiara on top, and on her small, slim and pretty feet were two pretty glass slippers. Oh, Godmother, is this me? Yes, dear, it is indeed you. You're beautiful to look at, and a loving soul also. Now off you go to the ball. Cinderella hugged her fairy godmother and started towards the coach. Just a minute, child. Remember, my power will stop at the stroke of midnight. The coach shall become a pumpkin, and you shall be back in your rags. So make sure you are home before the clock strikes midnight. I will remember that. Thank you so much for everything, and goodbye. Cinderella sat in the fancy coach and left for the ball. When she reached, the ball had already started. As Cinderella stepped in, everyone turned to look at her. Cinderella stood uncertainly at the door when the prince himself came forward to guide her in. I don't think I have ever seen anyone as beautiful as you. Would you please dance with me? Cinderella let the prince guide her to the dance floor. She couldn't believe that the prince himself wanted to dance with her. Who is that creature, Anastasia? Doesn't she look familiar? She is a bit pretty, but she can't compare with us. The prince shall soon leave her and make his way to us. However, the prince couldn't take his eyes off Cinderella. Cinderella had never enjoyed herself so much in her entire life. When she glanced at the clock, it was about to strike 12. She pulled herself away from the prince and ran down the stairs. In her hurry to leave, one of her little glass slippers fell off. The prince ran after her, but Cinderella was nowhere in sight. As he turned away, Cinderella's little glass slipper caught his eye. This is the slipper of the lovely lady I have spent the evening with. This has to be love, for I cannot think of a life without her now. Oh, my love, I will find you and will make you mine. The next morning, the prince called for his courtiers. Take this glass slipper to every corner of the kingdom till you find the fair lady whose foot it fits. The courtiers went to each and every home to search for the prince's sweetheart. Finally, they reached the house where Cinderella lived. We have been sent by the prince. All the fair ladies in this house are requested to please try on this slipper. The one whose foot fits this slipper shall be the prince's chosen wife. Drizella! Drizella, come quick! The prince's courtier has come with a slipper. The prince will marry the one it fits. Oh, I'm sure I'm going to be the chosen one. You may try it on also if it makes you happy, sister. Hmm. Always full of yourself as usual. Here, boy, let me try it on. Anastasia tried the slipper on, but no way would her large foot fit into the tiny slipper. I don't think that slipper can fit anyone other than a child. Drizella then tried the slipper. Her foot was slimmer than Anastasia's, but it would not fit into the slipper. 
though she tried to squeeze it in in every way possible. Excuse me, ladies, is there any other lady in this house? Of course not! You are just wasting your time! No way will this fit the foot of a lady! As the courtiers were about to leave, they caught sight of Cinderella near the kitchen door. This young lady has not tried on the slipper. Please, this way. Oh, I don't think. Come, come. Every lady must try it on. Cinderella came forward shyly and hesitantly to try on the slipper. She slid it on, and the slipper fit her perfectly. Her stepmother and sisters were shocked. When did she go to the ball? I don't believe this. Oh, will someone get me my smelling salts? We have good news, Prince. We have with us the young lady whose foot perfectly fit the glass slipper. The prince immediately recognized Cinderella, even though she was not wearing the grand clothes that she was wearing on the day of the ball. The king and queen were also overjoyed that their son had chosen such a beautiful bride. My darling, I would have recognized you no matter what you wore. You have stolen my heart, and I cannot wait to make you my princess. There was great feasting and rejoicing in the kingdom when the prince married Cinderella. Cinderella's family was also invited, who were very repentant of the way they had treated her. However, the good soul that Cinderella was, she forgave her family. I am blessed to find such a wonderful husband. I shall request him to allow my family to stay at the palace also. I wish I could see my dear godmother just once more to thank her. Cinderella and her prince lived happily for many years, ruling wisely over their kingdom. <laughs>